So um, if you recall, I'm just, uh, David and I was just in kind of a tangle on this, uh, yes, on this word, uh, Proverbs 27, verse 1. And it reads, this is the New King James Version. It says, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. And when I read that, it came at a time where I was trying to get into the mind of God and understand some things that I was dealing with in my life. That's in Proverbs 27. Uh, I was really trying to find out why the delay. What's happening that what it is that I desire to happen right now is not happening. And I still don't know that this is that this was my answer, but what I do know is that the word of God is truth. That's right. And so when we read truth, the word of God says, uh, it shall set you free. And so when I read it, it certainly released the peace in me regarding uh, you know the one case that I have going on right now. It's not a denial, it's just a delay. But I believe what the Lord wanted me to stop and pause to do was to wait on him before I began speculating or moving forward with ideas in my head about what I want to do because I know what he's doing in this restoration it's about his work. It's about what he's going to do. It's about what he's going to have the ministry to continue doing that which he had started on Kavanaugh Lane. And so I know that that's what's going to take place. But he wants me to wait on his direct, direction, his timing, and how he's going to bring it forth. Because, yes, while restitution may be about what he's going to do. I don't know how he's going to bring it about. And so when I saw this, as I was getting, because my for me, I, I was getting excited about moving forward and doing some things. And the word says, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. I don't know what's going to happen in that day. But I do know what's happening in the now. And then I begin to think about Jocelyn. Jocelyn sends me those placards and she'll read a word and she'll call me and she'll pray and she'll say, Pastor Sharon, the Lord told me to tell me to tell you stay in the day. Stay in the day. And I thought, okay, there is really something to this. Stay in the day. And then I thought about part of the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, verses 10, 3, 11. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. This day our daily bread. It's going to come, but the this day is going to be taken care of. Don't go too far into tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. It's right. going to take care of itself. But this day, my daily bread will be met. Stay in the day. Stay in the moment. And so the title of this message is Stay in the Day. Stay in the Day. It sounds so simplistic, but it has a very, very, uh, I mean, just the, the meaning of standing in the day can relieve you of burdens that you're walking around with. If God is going to take care of my daily bread, if he is going to allow me to receive it, because it says the kingdom come, thy will be done. It's going to happen. But don't get 
getting so fast ahead of yourself. Shit, whoa, horsey. Slow down a bit. Enjoy today. Enjoy the right now. Enjoy what's happening here. Because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Be good, bad, or indifferent. Let it take care of itself. Just rest in this day. And so my points here with this message are, number one, what is our daily bread? So our daily bread, as I think about my own life circumstances and things that I've had to deal with and things that have happened when I was, before I surrendered my life to the Lord, we'll say, I see our daily bread as being something that when, when the scripture says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, that everything is in, is in that. It's all wrapped up in that. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So whatever you need on a daily basis from sunup to sunday, the Bible didn't say that things were going to all be spent. What the Bible said is that things were going to work for your good. So as an unsaved person, because the scripture says that God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So for the unjust, God's word, it, it, it's still there for them to get to know him and give their lives to him. But for me, as now a born-again believer, when I have surrendered my everything, allowed God to become Lord over every aspect of my life, my daily bread, our daily bread, is that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. So if I got to go to court today, if I got to go to court next week, if I got to go to the hospital tomorrow, if I got to go to the hospital, whatever the case may be, if I'm hungry, he's going to take care of it because that's his promise, his word to me. So my daily bread becomes knowing his word for me. You knowing your, his word for your lives, not based upon how I see his word for my life, but getting to know him for yourself. So that as life has happened for you, you know when you've read something, and you know what, man, because you do this all the time, Pam. He said, I call this word on it. I call that word on it. That's his daily bread. We don't allow the emotions, as we talked about this morning, to cause us to miss out because his word is going to settle our spirit. His word is going to keep us stable. That's what's going to happen. So we have to know our daily bread. When we read the daily bread, that pamphlet that they give out, it's full of the word. They have scriptures in our daily bread. That's what it is. It's so that people who aren't carrying a Bible up under their arm, they have something that they can look at. That's why we include them in our bags that we give out to the homeless. So they may not have the ability to have a Bible, but they have this daily grace. Something that's going to tell them who Christ is. Something that they can hold on to every day. That's our daily bread. Knowing that the circumstances that will come up against us, I can say to them, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You need a bill paid? I'll be your provider. You need to be healed by his stripes. You are his. That's my daily bread. All found in the number one best-selling book for over 2,000 years and today. And it continues. The Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. If we read this word, if we get to know Christ, this becomes our daily bread. Gives us everything that we need for a day, and when we get to the next day, for that day too. It never stopped. The word of God says he is to stay the day for today, yesterday, and forever the Lord. It doesn't change. Point two, how do we receive our daily bread? Well, we receive the daily bread 
by number one, trusting what that word said, resting in what his word says, not getting emotional about what the circumstances are, what the situation is, but resting in his word that says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper in spite of what it looks like. It's not gonna hurt you. And even if you go into it, he's got a way to bring you through. You're gonna come out on the other side. I have yet to see God take a person to something and not bring them out. Amen? Amen. He's gonna do it. So we have to trust him. We have to rest in his word. I was challenged with uh, a situation where, um, with him and what he's dealing with. He's made a life decision that God has said, if you trust in what God was gonna do with him here, then you need to trust what God is gonna do with him there. Why would you not allow him to experience something so wonderful because of a fear? No, if you didn't fear what could have happened there, then you don't fear what can happen here. My same word applies forevermore. The same word applies forevermore. It doesn't change. The world may change, but God does not change. He remains the same that's right, that's forevermore. Right. Yes. And so we have to trust that's and right. rest in his word. That everything that he has said, once he has said it, which it has already been said, then that settles it. It's like hitting the gavel on the, uh, at the judge's bench. That's right. It's done. It's a done deal. Amen. Number three. Who receives this daily bread? Well, I started off by saying that the Lord reigns on the just as well as the unjust. And that had to happen because we weren't always saved. That's right. right? <laughs> And we don't always make the right decisions even after we become saved. And so to God be the glory for reigning on the just as well as the unjust. However, his promises are to those that have allowed him to be Lord over their lives. And so you have a guarantee once you are allowing the Holy Spirit to be active in your life. Because what's going to happen with the Holy Spirit, it's going to lead you and guide you down roads that are going to be good for you. Roads that even if you fall off for a minute, he's already got something in place that's going to help you Amen. fix the Amen. flat top Amen. and get back going again. But if you're not following Christ and you just run in a risk, you will come off that road eventually, especially if there's calling on your life. But you're going to stay here for a minute because there's no Holy Spirit operating in you to guide you, to help you get from point A to point B. So instead of you getting the flat tire and having somebody ride by and help you if you're a woman, and get that uh, donut or spare, whatever they call it, on that car so you can get to moving again, there's a chance that you might be there just stuck for a while. Because God wants you to think. God wants me to think. So the next time, maybe even the Lord was showing you something because he's really trying to get you to come into the kingdom. I really don't want you falling off the road again. I really want you to at least not do this thing again. And so while you're there, you're thinking about some things that maybe you've heard a sister Pam talk about, a witness, a testimony that she had in her life. Some other member is talking about a testimony. Somebody else is talking about a friend did this. And, and so, but the one thing in common that these people that are talking all have is that they're saved. <laughs> they are attempting to live a life according to the Lord. So we fall down the carpet and carpet, uh, the carpet sings that song, but we get back up. So you're there, but the Lord has given you some flashbacks 
And some people who you've seen end up on this same road, but they didn't stay down as long as you were having to stay down. So once you come to yourself, you get back up, but then you give your life over to the Lord because who wants to stay down forever? And it's like I, I, I've given this testimony before when I was in seminary. I remember I was so sick. I had, I mean, it felt like the flu, but it was the first day. I could not not go to that class and expect to accomplish and complete it. So I had to go. And I pushed myself to go to this class because I just couldn't afford could not go. not go. Yes. And so I said to the professor, I am really, really sick. I set off by myself. I said, I just wanted to show up and get how you're going to run things and what the expectation is of us. I said, so I'm not going to be active. And at some point, if I leave, please accept my apologies. But I'm just not well. But as he began to teach that class, and as he began to talk about the Lord, and the other ones began to talk about things that had happened in their lives, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, began to just well up in me and just overflow me that oh my god i forgot i was sick i was feeling so good and when the class ended one of the classmates said i thought you said you weren't gonna be with a picture <laughs> y'all know y'all pastor <laughs> but that's what the word of god will do for you that's right that's and right it will begin to renew you, you. it will revive that's you, right, you. That's what right, you that's thought right. was going on you will keep that's going right, that's right. so you went you it's like time you can't afford not to tie that's right that's you right. cannot afford not to be in the will of the lord because if you're not in the will of the lord you're going to get places that you cannot get out yourself that's right that's you right. have to have the power that's of right. the holy spirit to work through you to lead you to where you need to go that's right. That's right. That's right. so who does this receive this delivery those that are seeking after god those who are allowing him to be lord over every area of our lives and again this doesn't mean that things aren't going to happen but you won't go you won't be there long you're going to survive it we become survivors we become people that overcome because why his word is yay and amen to his people if he said it, that settles it. So we just have to keep going. Don't get caught up in what step. people have to say. Just keep it moving. Keep it moving. If you know you are following the path that God has set you right. on, stay there. Stay the course. Stay the course. Right. Don't worry about the time. Take the clocks off the wall. That's if you right. know this way you're going, it's time. That's right. That's preach, right. preach, 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 sister Pam. Amen. He has something for us, and we just have to know it. Stay in the moment with his word. Stay in the day with his word. Trust him, yes. not men. We don't know what's going to happen. If we leave it to Donald Trump, the way he's talking, if he doesn't win, he doesn't trust the election. That means it was rigged. That's right. But he's putting the mindset of people who obviously don't know the Lord that if he does it to also bring about a, 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 a revolution, yes. we got to know the Lord. Because here's what I will tell you, Trump or help, we are approaching a revolution because time is running out. And we have to know our daily bread. We have to know everything there is to keep us in a day. We have to know that that same word that keeps us in that day it's going to keep us into the next day. It's going to keep us for on and on until the day that Christ returns and says, well done, my good and faithful servant. So we have to know the word of God. We don't operate based upon the world's principles. That's right, that's right. We are in the world, but we're not of this world. We are under grace. And yes, the yes. word of God says his grace is sufficient. That's right. That's right. That's right. Period. It's sufficient. To keep us. That's right. So we don't have to worry. So stay in the day. What is our daily bread? The 
the word of God, knowing that. How do we receive it? By trusting it. Don't try to, the way it's like, when it say this here, but it, no, just trust it. Just trust it. Number three, who receives this word? The man Those that are seeking after him. I throw up 1 John 5 and 5, every opportunity I get. Who is he that overcomes this world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? That scripture covers a multitude of things that I go through in my personal life. If it was not for that scripture, I don't know where I would be. But I know it says overcome. Those folks overcome that believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That's who we get over you believe. And, and God's word is it's not contingent. He, he couldn't allow that to be anymore because we there's nothing that we could do to ever be so right. So he just said, believe. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Just Simple. believe. Simple. That's it. And if you do that, you are an overcomer. That's all we have to do. So I thank God. I thank God for his word. I, this is why this is a, an exciting word for me because I love Jocelyn. She's She's so precious. She that's the heart of the Lord gave me a word. She talks in that little soft voice. Uh -huh. And she said, today is the day that you want to rest. Today, don't go into anything. Just rest. Just rest. And that's what we, we want to do. Resting doesn't mean that we don't go about our daily work and the things that we have to do. It means that what we're doing as we're doing it, whatever we declare and decree for our lives, it will be so according to his word. It will be so. Because that's what he said. So I leave you with this word. This is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without convectiousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Stay in the day. Stay in the day. Whatever's going to happen to you as a child of God, he's given you everything you need to overcome it, to accomplish it, to get through it, to move on to see what the next day is going to be. And we trust him to bring us out. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.